Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 16 of your shadow work challenge. As I said yesterday, today is a really, really big day for the challenge. There's a huge exercise that you have to do today regarding childhood trauma, especially through the lens of Quan Yin, who is, was, is one of the avatars from the Sophia Code. And I want to go back and review that because I want to remind you guys that if this work, once more, if this work ever becomes too much, please find a therapist, find a healer, find someone to help you process through this. This um, shadow work challenge is just meant to be a template to help you start to recognize your shadow side. Because when we recognize our shadow side and we start to heal our shadow side, then we can start to heal the shadow side of the macro. As I've said before, all the things we know that go on in the world that are very nefarious, they're not going to go away until we actually heal ourselves. And so this is the biggest warrior badass move that you can do is to actually face your own demons your own shadow your own wounds and so once again let's look at day 16 the exercise you're doing today is once again the 45 minute bar but this is probably the easiest part of your day or half primary series with ashtanga nurse you're doing your cold shower for five minutes and then you're doing all meditation then you're going to have to do the, the contemplation of the day, which is childhood trauma. And you're going to be listening to Quan Yin, her activation from the Sophia Code, which is 60 minutes. Here is the link. Now, why I'm having you listen to Quan Yin is because it's going to start to pull up in a very loving way, start to pull up childhood trauma. Now, we went through all of this yesterday, so I won't rehash it again. But this is such a big exercise that I want to remind you guys that you don't have to complete the whole thing today. If you need to just start today and start the journaling process today and then maybe tomorrow or the next day, write the letter to yourself, that's totally fine. Um, I'm assuming some people are going to have some realizations that maybe they didn't have before about things that happened to them in their childhood and maybe how those experiences shaped them as an adult, shaped their perspective of the world, perhaps made them vulnerable to certain types of people that have not been good for them. And hopefully by addressing this and seeing the innocent child that you were, those, those wounds can start to heal. I also want to remind you guys that the path of healing yourself isn't one and done. It's continual. It's your whole life. As long as you're in a body, you're always going to be readdressing these wounds. So I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed. Just by acknowledging that there are wounds, you've totally changed your vibration. Okay? So it's not like you have to come through some huge breakthrough in order for everything to shift. By just acknowledging what's going on with your psyche is going to start to shift everything already. Okay, I know a lot of people in the group are really struggling right now. And as I've said before, I expected that to happen around the midway point. That's why on the 15th, we talked about motivation and discipline, what the difference is between the two. This is when sadhana or devotion kicks in for you. And as I said before, as I've said with Emmy and Stephanie, it's always darkest right before the dawn, right where you're really struggling and you're in the pits of hell and you can't see a light. That's usually right before the breakthrough. So do not give up. Do not give up. Keep pushing forward because you are Ram Das and Bhagavan Das have written about this right before the ego dies. It pushes back really hard and the ego is going to continue to do that off and on throughout your life. So right before you're about to have a huge monumental uh, place of liberation, it's like the, the ego fights back even harder. OK, and so as long as you know that, you know what to expect. When it happens, you'll see it for what it is. All right. So today is a huge day with Quan Yin. Let's go ahead and look towards tomorrow. So day 17. Once again, you ha you didn't come this far to only come this far. If you don't make up your bed every day, start doing that now. And again, your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. I am going to be working on a... Um, video with emmy about gut health and we're going to talk more about why this is really important and i want to ask you guys let me let me know down in the comment section below for those of you who are doing this have you started to notice a difference in the way you feel when you wake up in the morning if you are if you have stopped eating by 7 p.m i stop eating at 5 p.m so my last meal happens around four o'clock in the afternoon and i do that intentionally because i'm up so early in the morning to practice that i want to make sure that my stomach the food in my stomach has 
has completely digested when I get up in the morning. And so once again, that puts my last meal around four, four to 5 p.m. So I, I always give myself between 12 and 14 hours. And as I said yesterday, just to reiterate, if you're snacking at night, so sleep is really important. I have you guys going to bed before 10 o'clock because 10 o'clock goes into the pitta time of night. So pitta from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's the fiery time of night. So if you're already asleep by the time you get to that mark, that fiery time of night is when the body is going to start to recalibrate itself. It's going to start to heal itself. It's going to use the fire of transmutation to heal your skin, to heal your organs. If you're up snacking all night or if you're eating at nine o'clock, then that fire of, of, of peeling is only going to be in your gut digesting your food. But if the digestive system is already worked it's already done then that blood can go elsewhere to heal other parts of your body so that is why when people tend to stop eating at night they have a cutoff they wake up feeling more refreshed they wake up with more energy they wake up with clearer skin they wake up with less bags under their eyes they wake up with just a whole new outlook on life because the blood in their body has actually had the opportunity to leave the digestive system and heal other parts heal other parts of the whole instead of constantly having to go to the, the digestive system to digest the food. For me, after I practice or work out, I usually wait an hour um, after I practice or wor work out to eat because at that point, the opposite is true. At that point, the blood has gone to all over the body because of working the muscles. And now I want to try to get the blood to come back to that digestive tract. So when I eat, the blood is there to help digest the food and so once you kind of know how this works you start to see the the the, the reason the, the devil's in the details right you, you there's a method to the madness you start to see why so i'm interested please let me know in the comment section what has your experience been stopping yourself from snacking after 7 p.m is it been, and also as i said in the, when we first started this a lot of people are emotional eaters a lot of people use food to trigger endorphins and so at night when we're laying in bed or we're watching TV or whatever we're doing, we those old emotions start to come up. So we try to hide them by snacking. We try to cover the pain by snacking. So on the flip side too, by not snacking at night, are you finding more emotions are coming up? Are you able to journal more at night because you're actually in a place where you can feel the emotions instead of just shoving chips in your mouth to create the endorphins to cover the emotion? So let me know how that's going for you guys. So tomorrow, once again, third day in a row you pick between the 45 minute bar or the yoga okay you do once again the all meditation notice how i'm focusing more on the all meditation because that vibration of healing is very important all right journal what you're eating so you can start to understand what food is working for you and what isn't so as i say for tomorrow for today's practice yesterday was a big day for moving around some childhood trauma how are you feeling today are your emotions a little hungover from the work yesterday today you can review your childhood trauma you faced yesterday and connect that trauma to a certain weakness in the chakra. Since you've been taking inventory of your food intake and you review the dosha system, how do certain foods invoke feelings of depression, anxiety, or trigger childhood wounds? So once again, the human body is energy, food is energy. So are there foods that you're eating that is invoking depression or anxiety or triggering childhood wounds? This is all about the alchemy, guys. So a banana, if you eat a banana and then all of a sudden you have anxiety 45 minutes later, then the energy of that banana is not serving your highest good. Yes, we want these wounds to come up, but we want them to come up in a very healthy way and through the modality of exercise and meditation, not through your food. Your food should be like a medicine. Uh, let food be thy medicine, right? Your food should be able to counteract all these feelings to give you the alchemy you need to give you the strength, the energetic strength to work through the trauma, not add to the trauma. So I really want you guys to pay attention to that. I know I said that in the beginning, but oftentimes when we think about food sensitivity, we think about bloating, gas, diarrhea, whatever. We do our rashes on the body. We don't often correlate food with emotional states, but food very much causes emotional states. Okay. There are foods that will cause depression and anxiety. So start being aware of that as well. Sometimes you'll eat something and your stomach will be fine, but all of a sudden you want to go cry in the corner. So really start to pay attention to that. If you're feeling overwhelmed by childhood trauma work, take a little extra time to rest today. If you can take a nap or do the sound bowl healing, please do. So you can also, you can, 
as I said for today, you can kind of drag out that to tomorrow as well, this exercise if it's a lot. But if you get all of the exercise of Kuan Yin done, done today, then tomorrow I do want you to take some extra time to just kind of process everything with the um with the Kuan Yin. Okay. So um let's see, look three people in the eyes and smile at them. And once again, the same, the same nightly exercises. All right. So once again, I am so proud of you guys. The Signal Group is popping. It's incredible. I've had so many people reach out to me regarding the 60-day challenge, and we will be doing the 60-day challenge in January. I'm not sure about the start date yet. I've got to look at that um, because I'm going to have to do the 60-day challenge a little bit differently than a 30 day challenge because it's going to be longer. So I'm going to have to relook at that. I'm also probably going to have to create um, different tiers for the 30 day challenge. Um, because for example, I set this challenge up with the extra, I gave you some optional exercise, but it's ge geared mostly towards beginners. So for someone like me, who's been doing this for 16 years, a lot of the exercises that I've given you would not be good for me because I'm already past a certain level of fitness. So it would be pulling me back a little bit. And so with that being said, so a lot of you guys who are on the challenge now and you're getting stronger, I loved that people were saying yesterday how they're noticing a difference in the bar, how they're feeling stronger in the bar. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. So for you guys doing the challenge now and you continue working out throughout December, once January hits, you're going to have to take a different tier of exercise to keep pushing that, keep pushing that transmutation, right? So I'm going to have to create two tiers. So what I'll probably do with the 60 day challenge is for people who are new to the challenge for the first 30 days, for the first 30 days of the challenge, I'll probably do a repeat of what this 30 day challenge is doing some tweaking because there's Thanksgiving and stuff. But then I'll create a second tier for those of you who have already done this 30-day challenge for your first 30 days of the next challenge to keep it up for you. Then the last 30 days will be co cohesively together. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to have to start to look at that so I can, and I'll, when, when I send the 60-day challenge away, I'll send it all to every person so every person can pick which tier works better for him or her. So um, so that's, I hope that makes sense. Um as your body starts, you know, it's like, that's why we have six different series in Ashtanga Yoga. As you continue to move down this path and your body becomes conditioned and your mind becomes conditioned to the work, we have to keep upping the ante of the work to keep that fire of transmutation going, right? And so once again, I'll reiterate, if you're doing the 30-day challenge now and you keep up the exercise through December, once January hits, you're going to need a more challenging challenge to keep that fire going. Okay, but if you're not doing the 30 day challenge or you slack off in December, you'll start again with this template of the 30 day challenge to build you back up again to that level of, fit, of physical fitness to be able to then meet up for the second uh, part of the 30 days with a more intense look at the exercise so that fire can keep moving through your system with the with the. Um, 60 day challenge, I will probably make it optional whether you're exercising six days or not. It would, it would probably be an option between five and six days of exercise. I did six days for 30 days because it's only 30 days. And some of the days, as you see, are only like 20 minutes of yoga. So it's just to keep you going in these 30 days. But when we're looking at a longer, more extensive challenge, there are probably going to be uh, like two rest days a week, optional, one rest day optional. Um, for those people who are like me, I, I've been exercising six days a week for probably 10 of the 16 years I've been doing this. And so that's not that big of a deal to me. So I'm going to make it more wiggle room for so that this this template will work for every single person. I'm hearing stories. I mean, people were sharing stories in the chat a few days ago about losing their pant size or going down. I mean, that's incredible. The physical body is definitely an expression of the spiritual and the emotional body. Next week with the Hathors, I recorded it yesterday. They talk about this in order when your vibration starts to raise up, when your vibration gets stronger and louder and more light starts to break through, your physical body has to be fit and enough to carry a harder, more powerful vibration. That makes sense to me. That's very much common sense. And that's coming from the Hathors. They're saying that, yes, as we as we've seen in research with all the old ancient spiritual practices, physical fitness and spirituality are one and the same. They're one and the same. 
And so for a lot of you guys, as you're working through this trauma, as you're digging and leaning into the exercise, you're leaning into it, you're starting to feel your body change. So as your emotions start to purge themselves, as you're starting to feel more powerful, your body is now holding in that power. The core is getting stronger. So those three chakras can hold that power in up Shashumna. Your pectorials are getting stronger. Your arms are getting stronger. Remember, the arms are the extension of the fourth chakra. The chakra of the hands come right right out of that heart chakra. And so as you start to strengthen your back to hold your chest up and your pectorials get stronger, you're able to then hold more energy in that heart center. If you're weak or body is, is sick or is not, is not responding, it's crumbled, right? And so that power can't come up through the body. And I'm watching you guys start to realize this. And it's so absolutely amazing. And I'm so proud of you guys. Again, we're not doing these practices to look good in a bathing suit that is a nice benefit at the end of the day but it's to make sure your body is right there where it needs to be spiritually for this timeline flip for being able to hold every essence of what your soul the vibrational level your soul can get to and i'm so incredibly proud of you guys we're right in the thick of it keep going you ha you didn't come this far to only come this far if you got to cry in the middle of the day, you go sit in the corner and cry. It just, it is what it is. And please know you're not alone. You are not alone. Every single person across the globe right now, regardless of whether they're in this 30 day challenge or they're like me, they're an intense yoga student or a Qigong student or they're on a Reiki path. All of the people across the world that are doing this right now are experiencing that same dark night of the soul. They're experiencing the same shadow within themselves. And so you are not alone in those hours of weakness where everything feels hard and feels tough and feels emotional. Just know that there are so many people around the world that are right in your position as well. And together, as we heal ourselves, as we take responsibility for our own healings, the world itself starts to heal. All right, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please, again, let me know in the comment section how you are doing. I'll talk to you soon.